Well, hi there, E. Let's talk. Hi, James from Ingvid. I know what he's saying. He's talking about today's lesson. What we want to study are, well, what I want to introduce you to are five questions that you can use when you first meet somebody to develop a, a bond. And a bond means sort of a relationship that you can, can carry on later on. If you, a lot of people will suggest watching movies for learning how to do conversation, and I agree, and I've mentioned it in several videos. But let's be honest, what we need is in-depth um, involvement. What I mean by that is you need to immerse yourself in language. And when you're immersing yourself in language, you want to do something like talk to people. Now, the problem with talking to people, many students say, is that you can't really get a good conversation. Today's lesson, I'm going to teach you five questions and opening lines or bridging questions that will help you to create natural conversations, which will get people to come back to you. So I'm going to start by coming over here and explaining how conversations are like essays and do a small comparison before we get to the questions and what those questions can possibly do to help you open up a conversation and naturally make it flow. All right. So we're not talking about language apps. We're not talking about movies. They're all good. They're good. They're great to start off with. But if you don't get enough natural input from people to know the ebb and flow or how conversation goes, what pauses mean, which means stop in the conversation, you're going to have what we call the stilted conversation where it seems more like an interview or an interrogation where one person asks questions and the other person says yes or no, but you don't go any further. And without further ado or not waiting anymore, let's go to the board and start our conversation lesson, shall we? Now, conversations are like essays. Now, for a lot of you guys are doing essays in school right now, so you're learning how the five paragraph essay or how to write because you want to go to college or university in Canada, or you're writing a business letter and you want to sell a product to somebody. Not quite an essay, but you'll get the structure that I'm talking about. When you write to someone, especially in an essay, you need an introduction. An introduction could be it the thesis, the three major points, and a sort of a conclusion that leads to the body where it sums it up saying, this is my argument, right? And this is what we're looking at for our introduction for an essay. When we move from an introduction to an essay to the body, we explore the subject. What that means are things that we started to talk about here, we go in deeper here and try to explain why this is true or why this isn't true. We finally go from exploring the subject to the conclusion where we say, well, this is what I believe because of what I've said, or this is how I have disproved something someone else has said. And it motivates the person to follow up because if you write a really good essay or if you're doing a really good sales letter, somebody's going to follow up, meaning they're going to want to find out more by either contacting you or reading for themselves. So they get a deeper understanding of the subject and, or they understand what you were writing. You motivate them to learn, basically, is what I'm saying. That's what we do for essays. So how does this compare with a conversation? Well, when you meet somebody, because with an essay, if you've, they've never read the topic, you are meeting. The essay is their introduction, the first time they're meeting the subject. When you have a conversation, we have what's called an icebreaker. Icebreakers are something we don't have now, but in the old days, they would actually have frozen ice and they'd have to break it into pieces because they would make a... You know, they'd have an ice bucket at the door or whatnot. I can't remember exactly, but they'd get big ice and have to smash it and keep it. It wasn't like today where you can get ice out of your fridge by pressing a button. So you need an icebreaker, something to, when we say break the ice, when you don't know someone, there's, it's cold. You might say two people can be frosty or ice-like. To break the ice is to warm up to communication, to getting to know each other. So you need a sentence besides, you know, hey, baby, how you doing? <laughs> Not a great icebreaker, by the way, but something that makes somebody will open up and turn towards you to say, okay, hi, hello, or whatever the next thing is. People usually go from icebreaker to open-ended questions. You notice I have something in here. I'm going to come back to this in a second, but similar to the essay, they go to open-ended questions. That's like to explore the subject. Exploring the subject is getting to know you. Who are you? What do you like? What don't you like? Who am I? Do we even want to get to know each other better? Then we move to conclusion. I mean, I'm lucky I'm doing videos so I can talk all night long. But unfortunately, you have a job, you have a place to go, you have to go home, you have to go to school. So in a conclusion for a conversation, if the conversation has had a good introduction, 
you have asked good questions to motivate interest. When you conclude and they get to know a bit, you end the conversation, you wrap it up, but in a way that you can talk again later, maybe by email, maybe by Skype or Zoom, or maybe on Facebook, but you'll continue the conversation and get to know each other, right? Okay. So far, so good. They're very similar, except I added here bridging questions. Well, what is a bridging question? Well, people and essays and books or sales letters aren't the same. When you're talking to someone, and this is where I said a movie or an app isn't quite the same, it's real life, it's happening now. There are things that are going to happen by between your body language, uh, time of day, whether we're hungry, where we are, that's gonna change that conversation, the speed of it, the words coming out. If I'm listening, you might slow down to make emphasis. It's real. So you can't just go from an introduction to open-ended questions because, you know, um, hi, my name's James, do you wanna go to dinner and get married? Whoa, where the hell did that come from? You kind of got a bridge. And what I mean by bridge is you're here, this person's here, you've done your introduction so you can see each other and wave, but how do you get over here so that you can take time to get to know each other? Bridging questions. So I'm going to give you five questions that you're going to ask that's going to give, give you the power to be able to get to know someone, but I'm also going to give you the bridging questions you should ask first that can lead from an introduction to a question that makes sense so your next question, which is an open-ended question, where they won't say yes or no, but they'll give you information, will work nicely, neatly, and lead to great conversations, or sorry, great conclusions, so for further conversations. So if you're ready to explore that with me, get ready, and let's go. Okay, so you did all the work to understand um, what, or how a conversation in a book or an essay or a sales letter can be similar and how they match up. And I threw in that concept of, you know, linking something or uh, leading with something, yeah? So we're going to go over to the board and I'm actually going to give you the five questions that I think can generate an amazing conversation with someone. I've not only done that, I've added with that what I call leading questions, something you will start with to get to that question that will develop a beautiful conversation. And <laughs> you don't think I just stop there. I'm gonna try and give you some background on why you might wanna use this question or what makes this question special. So you're not just going to say, I'm going to ask this question in any situation. You might wanna know if I use this question, if I wanna learn this about a person. Kinda of good, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> so let's go to the board and we'll take a look. Question number one. Okay, before, yeah, you, you, what we wanna ask is, if you could eat only one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? So that's the question. And we can even go further with that question would be like, where did you first have that meal? Who made it for you? And get some, you know, we can get a, have a little bit of fun with it with a person because food is something we all love. So this is a question about having fun. Now, honestly, you can't walk up to someone and say, hi, my name's James. So if you could only eat one food for the rest of life, what would you eat? They'll look at you and back up and go, well, back up. You crazy, you crazy. <laughs> so how do I get in there? Well, imagine I'm walking down the street. I see you and I walk up and go, hi, and we're talking a bit. My name's James, oh, your name is, is uh, Valerina or uh, Valeria. Go, yeah, Valeria, great. I go, hey, are there any good restaurants around here? And she might go, yeah, down the street, there's a good Italian restaurant, you might like it. I go, really, cool, that sounds fantastic. I got a funny question for you. If you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would you eat? And they might go, good question. And as you're thinking about it, you could ask, hey, is there a restaurant around here that sells that kind of food? And all of a sudden you've opened it up for a conversation, see? Now, when I'm giving you these leading questions, don't think that you have to do this with that exactly. Think of context, where are you? You could be sitting eating dinner with a friend or someone you've just met at a party, and you're not going to say to them, is there any good restaurants or are there any good restaurants around here? That's just not paying attention. But while you're eating, you could say, this food is amazing, do you enjoy it? And they might say, yeah, and you go, hey, you know what? If you could only eat one food, there you go, there's that question. And it's a fun question, it's icebreaker, it gets to get, you know, you get to know the person by asking things like, where did you first have it? Maybe they were on vacation, who made it for you? Maybe it was a family member. So this is a getting to know your question. And it's done over a fun way that's not too invasive, which means it's not too strong. Food, we all eat food, we all love food. 
You can even change it to what food could you not eat ever again for the rest of your life? Why not? And they might go, oh, liver, I hate it. Oh, my mom made it. It's disgusting. And it's a great conversation. Question number two. You could say, okay, question number two is, what was your first job? And you want to know why? Once again, this is a fun question. Nobody ever has a great first job. Well, very few of us have great first jobs. Some of us, like I delivered newspapers as my first job at six o'clock in the morning. It was cold, it was wet, but I learned the value of, ah, so you got to know about me because I told you about my first job. It wasn't a great job, but I learned something from it or I was able to buy this because of it. How do you get there though? How do you get there? Because walking up to someone and asking them about their first job, unless it's a business or a job interview, is not a good question to ask. But we could start off with, you know, like weather's pretty good, da da da. Hey, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm a salesman. Well, how do you like your job? Person's gonna ask, I love it. Oh, you know, it's okay, it's a job. I go, yeah, I know what you mean. Remember when we were kids? Do you remember your first job? Yeah, I sold ice cream. Remember I said to you at the beginning, the best kind of way to get better at conversation is to have natural input. These conversations lead to natural input that you can't just practice like from movie scripts or language apps. You need to be able to get something that's real, that touches us, that would naturally touch you. And you notice how we're talking about childhood here. And these are fun and light because sometimes you just want to, as we said, break the ice. We've broken the ice with a hello. We've let in with a good question that is not too strong. Then we can go for a deeper question that helps them to reveal themselves without feeling that they're forced to. Okay, question number three. Let's go over here. What is a relationship deal breaker for you? Now this changes. This isn't a fun question. This is a question to find out someone's morals uh, or what they feel is more or they feel are is morally right or wrong. Uh, what they will tolerate, what they will not tolerate. All right. So tolerate means you'll say it's okay. I don't like it, but it's okay. And if you don't tolerate it, you say it's not okay. I will not stand for this or I won't take it, it's over. So a deal breaker in a relationship can be, do they lie? Will they cheat, have sex with somebody else? Will they say bad things to you? These are things that you're saying, these are the things that I stand for and I will not let someone do to me, okay? So a deal breaker, because when you break a deal means the relationship will be cut or broken if this happens. This also tells you what behavior, even if you're not a girlfriend, a boyfriend, husband, or wife, that if you do these behaviors, they won't be your friend either. So if they say a deal breaker is someone who's always late, you better be on time, whether you're their girlfriend, boyfriend, or just whatever. You understand? All right. Because that could be a deal breaker. Now that's a heavy question. You cannot, and I am telling you, do not walk up after saying, hi, my name is James. What's a relationship deal breaker for you? Because right away they might be thinking, what, you want to date me? I don't even know you. Who the hell are you? That could be the first thing going through their mind, or you might just seem crazy. But how would you ever get there? You could have a casual conversation, you know, like, hi, my name is James, da, 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 you're talking, and you could turn around and say something like, hey, have you ever had a bad relationship? The answer to that is a yes, no, and I know here these are not supposed to be yes, no questions, but in saying yes or no, if they say they have had one, you don't have to get too personal, but you could say, what was the deal breaker in that relationship for you? And now they're answering that question for you, you see? And if they say, no, they've never had a bad relationship, which is unusual, then you could say, that's funny. So what would be a deal breaker for you? Whoa, yep, we went around. They say yes, no, we got you. Chat, boom, ours. Remember though, I'm joking around, but this is a serious question and it's going to lead to someone telling you what they morally think is right or wrong. So they're going to take it seriously. You might want to share, and I should say in all of these questions, to make the conversation continue, you want to share. You want them to talk because then they, you will probably most likely, if they're good conversationalists, ask you, what about you? What was your first job? Or what food do you think would be the one you'd want for the rest of your life? There you go. You've created a bond. And in something like this, what are deal breakers? When they ask you that question, they're going to be looking at you and finding out from you what are important issues to you that you would break a relationship over. So see, we're, we were having fun in the sun, but now we're moving down to serious stuff that you can actually use in real life situations. Next, 
Question number four, would you want to live forever? Now, I asked this question just now, and you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I never thought about that. Hmm, that tells me a lot about you. <laughs> people with imagination, creativity, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but a lot of people, if they think if I could live forever, it's like, why would you live forever? These are philosophical questions. So it gives you insight into somebody. If they said, yeah, I do, because I want to drink and party all the time, tells you, yep, that's all you need to know, right? That will give you information whether or not you want to go deeper into a friendship with this individual. And you might find out something really deep about them, like they want to find out how life evolves on the planet and where it goes from there, or so on. You're like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. But it gives you deep insight into them. So how do you get into a question like that without, you know, how do you start there? You might want to say something simple like this. If you had an unlimited amount of time to learn a skill, what would you want to learn? Notice this is not the same as living forever. When you're saying this one, you're saying, hey, what would you want to do if you could, it's like if you had enough time to do it? Because we all have jobs and relationships and obligations. But I'm saying in that question, the lead in question, well, if you had the time, what would you want to learn? Play guitar? <laughs> They might say, yeah, man, play guitar, do some art, and I would like to travel to Mars. And then you go, okay, now what happens if you could live forever? What would you do? Oh, dude, you know what I want? And all of a sudden, you've got them excited, and you're getting insight into who they are. Maybe they're artists, and the, their job might not be that way, but the way they think is that way. Or maybe they'd want to, you know, explore. They're explorers. You don't know. If we have forever, it changes what you might want to do in life versus when you're limited and you have to make money. So this is a great way to get insight into people. All right. Now, question number five. Who is your celebrity crush? A crush, okay, you may not know, but a crush is when you have like romantic feelings towards someone. Like, okay, I know he's getting older. Sorry, Tom Cruise. There was a time you was the man. I don't know who the man is today anymore. Um, but there was a time Tom Cruise was considered like the heartthrob. People loved him. And many women loved him because he was dangerous. He was adventurous. Some people liked Harrison Ford because he was mature, like as in uh, Indiana Jones. Whoosh! Intelligence and bravery. Some people had a crush on Arnold Schwarzenegger because Mr. Schwarzenegger was just very huge. You know, he had the muscles. Anyway, so that told you a lot about what they found attractive. So when someone tells you their celebrity crushes somebody, they're telling you, I find this attractive in a man or a woman. And you can kind of go, okay, how do I use that? <laughs> I told you, you're not here just to learn English. It's a vehicle. <laughs> okay, so how do you go there? Because that's kind of like a funny question to ask someone you just met. But something that's not so funny and that's very interesting is, hey, is there any famous person you'd like to meet? Most people have somebody that they want to meet in life. Now, that's not a sexual question. Like you might want to say, a person might want to say, Barack Obama, eh, maybe not him. Maybe Boris Yeltsin, he's dead. <laughs> no, I'm joking. He was a Russian leader. Um, I don't know. Who's your, like, Thor? Uh, Chris Helmsworth. Oh, that's the new heartthrob. Forgot. They might want to meet him. But it doesn't mean they have a crush on him. They might want to meet him because he's got a great body and they want to look like him. But you can lead for that question into something about celebrity crush because they're about the same. They're parallel. You're talking about famous people, ones you want to meet because... They are famous and interesting. And then the other one, because maybe you're physically attracted to them. That one leads to, as I said, attraction. Now, somebody helped me coin this phrase. I'm going to use it. If you master questions like this, and remember, I didn't tell you you have to use exactly this. I'm giving you ideas that will give you the time to sit down, maybe write it out, come up with your own lead-in questions. And you use these questions, you can get insight, attraction. You can get morality. You can get fun with these five questions while talking to someone, and they can go from five minutes to five hours. Now, I'm going to call you guys future native speakers. Why? Because if you master questions like this, you will become a native speaker, because this is the kind of thing we would ask each other. In fact, I'll tell you the truth. Most people don't ask questions like this. These are questions that will put you above that. So even though your English, English isn't your first language, it will make it seem like it's your first language. And that's a power we all want to have in the end, right? The ability to communicate well in any situation with any person. So hope you've had fun with that. Before you go, I've got a couple things because we always have a bonus. 
that you've stuck around to do this. I'm going to give you the bonus questions. Then we'll talk about your homework. Okay. Bonus question number one. <laughs> I think it's funny because you're going to say, what's your name? It's like, of course, everybody asks people their name. I go, yeah, but we are, as I said, future native language English speakers, and you're going to do something different. You're going to say, hey, so what's your name? And they're going to say, my name is Mr. E. <laughs> and you're going to say, sorry, it's that's Mr. E, right? And they'll go, yes, Mr. E. Then you'll say, so Mr. E, I was wondering, are there any good... What did I do? I used the name three times. One, I asked them to say it so I would listen to it. Then I repeated it back to them to make sure I said it to get it in my memory. And then I used it right away in a sentence to help it stay in my head. Why is this important? You know this is true, and I'm going to tell you right now. You've been in a conversation. Somebody said their name. They said, hi, my name is James. And their name dropped to the floor and you forgot it. And you spent the next 10 to 15 minutes trying to remember their name, not listening to what they said because you were afraid you wouldn't say their name. They would say, so you'd have to introduce them and you wouldn't know it. And it's embarrassing. It's happened to me. It happens to everyone. So by trying to get their name said at least three times right at the beginning of the conversation, and of course, try to say it again in the conversation, you'll find you will remember their name so you can focus on what they're saying to you. It's a small hint, but a big one. Try it out. Now, here's a question you should not ask, okay? Do not ask people any body-related questions. If you say to somebody, hey, are those real? Don't ask, okay? Body-related questions are things that are personal to people, and unless you know them well, even in beginning conversations, they don't want you to ask. One question you should not ask a lady, and this is a great example of body-related question is, are you pregnant or when are you due? Don't ask that question. Don't ask it. There are several reasons why a, woman might, a woman's body might have changed. Don't ask that question. Or any other question about, you look at the guy's hair, you go, is that real? <laughs> or is that a wig? You know, a, a, what do they call them? I can't remember. It's wigs. No, a man wig. men wear toupees. It's been a long time. Nobody wears anymore. They shave their head off, right? So don't ask those questions about body-related issues unless you really know them or your family. Don't even then. If it has to come up, it'll come up in its own way. So for the last two questions, what is your name? And the rule there is try and get it in three times. Ask their name, repeat their name back to them, then ask the next question starting with their name. And by the way, we all love our name, so it's not like they're going to get upset by you saying it. And repeat it as many times as you can in the conversation in a natural way so you don't forget it, so you can focus on the conversation. Don't ask any body-related questions. Okay, this is a North American thing. I don't know every culture in the world. Maybe there are cultures where it's okay to ask certain things. In North American cultures or Western cultures, generally it's not allowed or not acceptable, especially in beginning conversations. And what's our homework? Well, you know you got to have homework. You know you got to have homework with me, all right? Because uh, I love these conversations that we have. They're one-sided because I do all the talking and you do the listening. But I want you to practice this stuff, not just take it from me. You know, I say it to you and you believe it. Go out in the real world. Come up with your own leading questions. And in order to do that, you've got to understand what the question is you're asking or what question you want to ask next. So I have three questions here. Each question is worth 1,000 points because underneath the comments here, you're going to write in the answer whether you think it's morals or fun, insight, attraction, ask or don't ask. And people will vote on it and every thumbs up you get, if it's on YouTube, you're going to get a thousand points. If it's on Ingvid, uh, they'll make a comment on the comment section there. So make sure you go to Ingvid. We'll talk about that in a second. And your three questions are the following. Remember I told you each question and I kind of went out over it and I said, this question gives you this into somebody. Is it insight? It tells you about their morals. I want to see how well you are listening because a conversation is two parts. It's listening as well as speaking. So if you listened, you know the answer to this. It's, it's a silly question. Silly question. They are silly questions. If you weren't, watch the video again. Listen carefully because I explain each one to you. So the first question you want to do for your homework and answer in the comments below is, what is a relationship deal breaker for you? Is this a question based on finding out somebody's morals or is this a fun question? Just getting to know each other. Think about it carefully. Don't forget to write in the comment section. Who is your celebrity crush? Does this give you insight into the person or is it finding about their attraction? What makes them attracted to a person or what is attractive to them? And the third one is, is this a question you should ask? Are you pregnant? Should you ask this question or you don't ask this question? Okay, listen, I've had a lot of fun 
And I've run out of questions for you, but I'm sure you have some for me. Leave them in the comment section. And before you go there, I want you to go to a very special place where you can do a quiz and find out more about the questions that are there. You go to www.ing, as in English, ing, ing as in English, V as in video, vid, so ingvid, go to invig.com, do the questions there, meet some wonderful teachers. And if you like this lesson and you learned anything from it, you're like, wow, I didn't know that, that was interesting, subscribe. But don't just subscribe, ring the bell. There's a little bell on, by the subscription button. Ring that bell, because if you ring that bell there, you add it, any new video I come up with will come up for you. And that's something that will save you time and you'll get to learn from me a little bit more. Anyway, it's been fun being with you. You have a great day, evening or afternoon, wherever you are, and we'll see each other again soon. Ciao.